everybody, welcome back to Tall John's Fun Shop. Hey, Pop. What's going on, Jacob? What do we have here? Yeah, we got us a distributor machine. Oh, wait, distributor tester. And uh, it's kind of like a dyno for distributors. So I've kind of been playing with it lately. I haven't used it for a little while and been playing with it lately. And I think I'm going to make it do its thing and we'll show everybody how it works and and uh, what we can do with it. Sound good to you? Yeah, it does. Okay. Now, just a couple of quickie things here before we get started. This distributor machine is going to give us some information that, you know, most people don't have a distributor machine, right? Mm -hmm. Most people don't have a dyno either. So, what we have here is a actual machine that just makes it easier to do this job. It takes a few minutes as opposed to, you know, I don't know, maybe... Uh, Half hour, 45 minutes on a car it wouldn't take that long. But it's definitely more difficult to do it on the car, but this can be done. Now, another thing. This is uh, uh, definitely one of these situations where you would use, you would want to figure this stuff out before you started playing with your carburetor. All right? Mm -hmm. Now, obviously, you need to get your carburetor close. The jetting needs to be somewhat close. But this distributor tuned properly will affect how that carburetor works especially with accelerator pump and off idle and things like that so before you start drilling holes and making big changes in there something other than maybe jets you're going to want to make sure that this does what it's supposed to do all right now most people set their timing they read in the book it says you should have five degrees before top dead center sometimes zero uh, i've seen as high as eight um, but in any case, wherever the book says, that's not what we're going to do. The book tells you what the factory says, and the factory didn't tell us to do these things because it was for performance. They did it for emissions. And so we're not, you know, that's not our trouble anymore. So if you look at this, if you were to have this in your car, you would set your timing with your timing light, and you would rotate the distributor around to get the proper timing, right? Well, there's also another thing inside here, and it's down inside these holes here, down in the body of the thing. There's a couple of weights with some springs, and those weights fly out as it spins, and it advances the timing. That's called centrifugal advance. All right. Okay? Now, then there's this guy, this, this dude right here. That's vacuum advance. Now, a lot of people throw those out or get distributors without them, and they just don't even hook up the hose, and I'm telling you, it's important. Now, it's not as important as getting your centrifugal advance correct, okay? But this is important on any streetcar, and if your racing organization that you're working with allows this, you should use this. Now, I've seen uh, racing groups that if you're running a restricted size carburetor, they don't want you to put that on because they're afraid you're going to make a big air leak and you get a little extra breathing through your carburetor or something. But man, that would be barely, but okay. So there may be cases where in racing, you're not allowed to use this, but on the street, of course we can use it. And if the racing people don't care, you should use this. One other thing real quick before we get started is these advanced things down here. There are a lot of people that take those advanced things and either weld them up or get rid of them. And so you set the timing. If you're timing, you want it to be 32. You set it at 32 degrees and it never changes. But that makes it difficult for the car to start, especially when it's hot and especially in the summertime hot. And you'll go to crank your engine and it goes... So you either have to flood the engine or do something to get it to turn over to start. The way we're going to do this, that is not a problem. You're going to go out there and you're going to turn that key and it's going to fire off like fuel injection. Okay? So now the machine, uh, again, is not necessary to do this job. This right here is as much distributor machine as you need right here. And that right there, you can do it on the car with this. Everything we're going to learn here, you can do it with this. This is the good old timing light. Good old timing light. So, but we're going to do it here and show off the machine and have fun, okay? Sure. All right, so we're going to turn this thing on, Jacob, and we'll run it, and we'll get the different numbers. Now, this is for RPMs 
of the distributor okay now the distributor turns half the speed of the engine so if you see a thousand here it means two thousand on the engine and this is one thing that's nice if you're running a this is electronic but if you're running a points distributor on a gm they got a little window and you stick an allen wrench and you can tune your your uh, dwell on on it there and that's kind of cool I like that feature. Also, what's cool about a GM is these weights that we're going to get into down here, they're up here in the rotor. So you take the rotor off, there's your springs and your weights. And that's pretty cool. Makes it easy to tune there. Now, once you get this done, you're not going to be in there messing around with it a whole lot. But still, that makes it easier. All right, so with the distributor machine now, we can adjust. If we have points, we can just do it right here. Right here, just adjust our dwell right here on the spot before we even install it back in the car that's pretty cool now this here is a vacuum gauge it's attached to our vacuum advance so we can set how much vacuum is going into it now i'm going to go ahead and do this one and then when we find out what the numbers are we're going to try to match it to the barracuda and then i'll let you operate the machine then so we can see what we did if we did any good all right, no, blah, blah, blah. Let's test this thing. Yeah. Let's see what Let's we got. Let's do it. Oh, here it is. All right, now that thing got fully centrifugally advanced at 2,000 RPMs on the distributor, which is 4,000 RPMs oh. on the engine. That's terrible. And it went 20. Four degrees of, of advance. All right. Now let's do our vacuum. degrees which is 42 degrees now remember that's with the centrifugal so 42 degrees of vacuum now here's our problem Jacob is we want our initial timing higher the Barracuda's initial timing is 20 degrees its centrifugal timing is 32 degrees and vacuum is 48 degrees so we're going to make this distributor do the exact same thing okay mm -hmm. now that's what i'm going to show you how to do and again you can rev up your engine with your timing light and use your timing light and you can figure all these numbers out now we want full rpm advance centrifugal advance more like 15 to 1700 rpms okay and if you look, we're only wanting 12 degrees of advance. We have 24. So we've got to cut that in half. All right, so let me show you how you do that. Let's take this distributor apart. All right, now, these, this poor old rotor, this uh, reluctor's been off here several times. So I 
probably get this off pretty easily. Okay. Now we got to take the vacuum advance off first. You take the screws and then you have to lift this up pops out of there now there's two holes there's one close to the to the center of the distributor one out here and this particular type is one that goes to the center and there's another one here that goes to the outside can you see the difference mm -hmm. so that's just something to be wary about no big deal all right, all right now let's get the screws off of this plate Play it out of here or whatever they call it okay now take a look down here see these two springs there's one big one let me rotate it around so the camera can see it better there's one big thick one here and then there's a little skinny one right there now that's the big one that's the skinny one it's hard to see through the, the camera here okay so there's a the skinny one there's the big one now I'm going to show you a quickie trick. All Mopars can do this. All. And if a Chevy or GM has this, do the same thing. Uh, let me get this little poker here. Uh, what I like to use to get the spring off with is a screw. And you just take the screw into the eyelet, run it down in there, and boom, it pops it right off. Okay. Oh, let me show you something else here. There's a little clip down inside here, and this little clip is a pain. So if you ever need to get this little clip out of here, the first thing you do is you pull, there's a little piece of felt here, and you pull the piece of felt out. And this little clip has two little ears sticking up, and it's horseshoe shaped. Let me show you that real quick. This is what the clip looks like. And you have to get in there and somehow put two screwdrivers or something in there to push that apart. And then you can lift this piece off. Now I've already taken it out. And it isn't very fun, but sometimes you have to do it. So what we're going to do now is we're going to take our spring out of here. This, the big spring. Just take it. You don't even have to be nice to it. You see that sucker? Yeah. Here's what you do. Wing. Bye. See you later, junk. Yep. So what we do here is get you, get you down here with the, your camera. And we're going to take this spring here and we're going to take our screwdriver. And we're going to get in between some coils and we're going to tweak it. Now, I like to tweak it two or three times. But you see how it doesn't pull it all the way back anymore? Mm -hmm. You tweak it enough that it falls away. So as soon as the engine starts, it comes and runs up against the spring, and that takes out how much advance it has. I want more than that. I know for a fact it's going to working with it. So you see my big tweak in there? Mm-hmm. All right, now that takes care, takes some of the preload out of the spring. Now, I don't have enough in there yet, in my opinion, so I'm going to tweak this guy twice. So I'm going to tweak it in two places and just give it a tweak. Okay, so you can see the tweak in there. Mm -hmm. Now look how much this allows it to fall away. That's taking advance, centrifugal advance, out of the distributor. Okay? All right, now this should hopefully get our centrifugal advance in order. So we shouldn't have as much advance as we had before. And it should advance a lot faster. Alright, All right, let's put this thing back together. Alrighty then.
Okay, put your vacuum advance on before you put your reluctor wheel on. All right. Come on, get in there. There we go. There's a little roll pin down here that fits through this little hole here on the side. There we go. <coughs> Where's my screw? There it is. We hook up our vacuum. We put our reluctor wheel in. Now this one's loose enough that we should be able to just kind of push it down in place here. There we go. There we go. All right. Now, I'm going to film you. Give me the camera. And you go ahead and run the controls on this. And what I want you to do, Jacob, is you're going to adjust the speed up until the arrow stops advancing. And when it stops advancing, we need to look at what our speed is here, and we need to see how far it goes, okay? How many RPMs did it was it at? Right, right around a thousand. Okay. I saw a little less than that. I saw about 750. 750. Okay. So 750 is uh, uh, 1500 RPMs. So we got full mechanical advance at 1500 RPMs and 12 degrees. So with our initial at 20, we now have 32 degrees. Now let's see what we have with vacuum. So go ahead and run us back up again. All right. Turn the vacuum on. Yeah, turn the vacuum on. All right, we got 16, so 32 plus 16 is 48. That is exactly what we were looking for. Pretty cool. All right, Jacob, so I, I, I think you enjoyed doing what we just did today, huh? Yeah. What do you think? I enjoyed it in time. Yeah, me too. I always love working on stuff like this. It's uh, It's one of those things that, when you get it right, it gives you that advantage that most people don't really know about. So, it's a speed secret. Well, I think it's time for us to sign off. Sounds good. Well, thank you for hanging out with me and checking out the distributor machine. Actually, it's not a distributor machine. It's a distributor tester. Get it right. <laughs> All right. See ya. See ya.